It's a Field Sports Channel exclusive. Paul takes the first production Sacco 100 rifle in the world to hunt big game in Mozambique. Plus, it's all with new copper ammo. A lucky group of under 16s are enjoying a glorious day shooting driven pheasant, partridge, and duck in beautiful North Wales. Are we having fun? Yeah! More men than women hunt. One hunter in Africa is hoping to encourage others to join the sport by sharing her passion and the amazing experiences she's had since shooting as a child. Deborah Hadfield has more on her journey. If a woman wants to become a PH, there's absolutely nothing that's going to stop her. She just has to work a little bit harder to get there. We're giving away two Daisy Red Rider air guns. David is on the new stump and Rack and Load has this week's Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Welcome to Mozambique. This is a trip full of firsts. We've not been here before, and to add to the excitement, we have no idea what we're about to hunt. All we know from Manuel, our host, via our old friend Sergio Cuto, who is here on a fact-finding mission, is to bring a big game caliber. That's why Paul has a 375, and not just any 375. It's the only one of its kind in the world. This is the Explorer's Rifle, the first Sako 100 off the production line in Finland, and the first time any production Sako 100 will be used in the field. Good job Paul's had plenty of time to practice with it. It's been out for a little while, but there was only one made, it was like a prototype, which was sent to Denmark. It got caught up in customs or something in Denmark, so we didn't have a rifle for the trip. That rifle was gonna land with us about a week before, so it gave us a week to get prepared, but they had to actually build a whole new rifle. But how many shots do you reckon you put through before we actually got on the plane? I put a box, I put 10 bullets through. Um, I zero yeah, 10 rounds? 10 rounds. Your 375 yeah. before hunting Africa? Yes. Not ideal. If they put a straight pull in my hand, then yes, that wouldn't be clever. The area we're hunting is vast. Three hundred thousand hectares, about the size of the whole county of Lancashire. Manuel and his trackers are the guardians of this wildlife haven. Without them, it would be the poorer for it. And during this trip, we'll show you exactly why. I live my life in nature. I love nature. I love animals. I love what I do. It's a passion. I teach the people around me. Each one has his expertise and um, is a team. We were chatting about things and then he said, we don't do hunting. We do conservation that hunting helps to pay for. And that was very, very true. After a 4.30 a.m. breakfast, Paul heads to the spot where he can zero his new rifle. And, oh yes, with new bullets. The powerhead blade, which of course are okay. lead-free. I hope you've got some uh, ear protection, David, because this is going to boom a little bit. It's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit noisier than our normal uh, calibre size. We don't know how the incredibly hardy African game will take to them, but we have an endorsement from Manuel. Yes, perfect. I'm happy now. I'm happy now. Yeah. So. Yeah. With the heavier bullet, you will hit here. With the heavier bullet, yeah. Yeah. So that's so you like it 100 meters. I like it like it is. Inch, inch and a half higher at 100. Yeah. 
and then when you shoot out to 100, 150, you aim where where you want to hit. In the din money, yeah, cool. You are not shooting turtle doves. <laughs> 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 you aim where you want. Yeah, yeah. The heavier bullet is slower. Yeah. Spend more time in the barrel. Okay. So the the movement of the barrel after you shoot is to go is up. The yeah. barrel goes up. So Gives you if the bur uh. bullet stays more time in the barrel, we'll hit higher uh. at hundred meter. We learn all the time, oh. eh? Brilliant. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Do you want me to shoot with a heavy bullet? I, I I'm pretty sure that you will hit. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy with that. I'm happy now. I'm happy now. <laughs> With the Zeiss V6 zeroed at 100 metres, Manuel informs us we need meat for camp. As we had zebra kebabs last night, we're looking for something different. Our trackers point out a group of animals grazing in the distance. Among them are Liechtenstein hartebeest. Yeah, yeah. The wind was like that. Yeah, yeah. And then yes, it turned. A nice easy one to start with. <laughs> hey. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. So, sack or shoot? Yeah, it works. You had faith, you had good faith. <laughs> Brilliant. That's a fair shot. Fair shot. Fair shot. That's a fair shot. shot. With your new rifle. New rifle, new round. New round. And, uh, yeah. Big calibre and shooting 213, he said, which I was thinking, oh, yes. So, yeah. That's a lump of a bullet going that way, but he, he said it was going to go. Yeah, right. and uh, yeah, you see, you see the reaction on the animal straight away. Yeah, literally went 10 yards forward, reversed over back, was dead. So, uh, yes. Whew. And it's, a, and it's sh obviously the, the tripod uh, sticks as well, so you're not like in a quad stick situation. <laughs> God, you like to test me. You like to test me, don't you? <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes, I am shaking. I am shaking. I'm shaking. The pressure was on that. I'm afraid there was a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Obviously, last night we had a massive discussion about <laughs> copper and size of bullet, and and you were keen to use the the new bullet out because it's. I think you're interested in that. Yes, I I would like very much to see the result because. Um, for the pictures you that the internet shows yeah, yeah. about the bullets, they are very um, certainly very good. Yeah, you, you're not scared of using copper or no, 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 at no, all. No, no. With the energy that these bullets have, yeah, we can shoot anything. Yeah, yeah. 
you know. You're the one with the experience of these big calibers. Let's do it in other animals and we will see. The big, <laughs> bigger animals, we see the results. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then you, we make a conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> but till now is good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very happy, very happy. Rifle, round and childerly, all on song. Good job, as we now know, we're testing the Sacco 100 and Blade on Buffalo next. Omar has been skinning and preparing trophies for three decades. He's proud of his work. The buffalo, that one, there. Sebo. So how long in the salt did you say? Seven days. Seven days in the salt. One day here? Yes. Other days inside. Then when it get dry, I'll fold. I'll Done. pack there. <laughs> yeah. As, are, what, are there any easier to do than others? Are they all the same to do or some harder than others? No, no. All the same. All the same, all okay. The same. This is the zebra flat skin. Wow. And your work is all over the world. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. Elan the cape. So will that be for a mount or will that be just for, for someone's wall? For the shoulder, oh, shoulder mount. Shoulder mount, yes. Okay. yes. And how long have you been doing this? To skin? Yes. I started working on safari in 1992. Okay. Yes. 30 years? 30 years. Oh. I've safari. <laughs> You're quite good then. Yeah. <laughs> Have a look here. Look the damage on the heart. Yeah. That's the easy wound of the heart. Right through the top. Right through the top. You see that entrance? Entrance, entrance. Here. Yeah. Huh? That broke up perfect, didn't it? Are you happy with the bullet? So far, so good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is wasted here. Everything has a use. This is the nonsense of the trophy debate. Hides and bones are waste, but here they have a value and hunting directly and indirectly supports a thousand local people. We have 40 families living directly from the, 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 this company and around these 40 families we have around a thousand people that live from the income they make and the local population they receive 20% the rent that we pay to the government. This is huge. 20% of all that is huge, so they can make what they were not making in the past. They could not do anything. They had no jobs, they had no income, they couldn't buy or afford to buy anything. And now this company, for 18 years, made the change of life of all these people. Photo tourists and their dollars just don't cut it. This is why Sergio has come to Mozambique. He's here to look for hunting opportunities that sit well with his hunting ethos. I'm always looking for something different, natural, the, the, as the wild side of things, which I think that if we bring a little bit of hunting into it, we can benefit both sides. Uh, I, can, I can bring people that otherwise would be, wouldn't find these places. And um, I wanted to do it, and I was invited to do it, so, and then I thought, well, what better place than bring the guys from field sports once again. <laughs> so we can show to the wilder you know, world that, yes, there's still places very remote and very honest, you know. So, and hopefully we can pass that across. With a few hours of daylight left to burn, Manuel wants to return to an area close to where we shot the harder beast as a buffalo herd had been grazing close by, and he wants a closer look. Let's approach a bit more. On the left of the termite hill, yeah, yeah. That's a nice big boy, yeah. The one on the right. 
right. Yeah. It's not yet. It's not a material. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being this close gives Paul, Sergio and David a sense of what hunting a buffalo will be like. Nothing can prepare them for what they will soon encounter. So tomorrow we hunt buffalo. Yeah. This is not hunting. Next time, it's the Sacco Blade versus Buffalo. Wildfires, the sobering scale of wildlife crime, and how hunters are the only line of defence. For more information about the new Sacco 100 due in shops soon, and the Sacco Powerhead Blade with smaller calibres coming online soon, go to sacco.fi. If you would like to experience Mozambique in all its raw glory, contact Sergio via his website, circoutwildharvest.com, and there's a link to all of those below. Thank you, Paul, Sergio, and Manuel. And if you'd like to know more about the Sacco 100, there's a link below to a field tester film we made in Finland just last week, where Paul finds out how easy it is to change the barrels on this new rifle. Plus, when it reaches the UK, you'll be able to find it on kitfinder.co.uk. Now, what is the Field Sports Nation getting as a prize this week? The draw is for two Daisy Red Rider air gun sets, ideal for kids, each priced at £60. Find out how to enter on the Field Sports Nation's own TV show, Field Sports Extra, which is out on Tuesdays. And you can watch that TV show by joining them for a five for a month. Link to that below. Now, David is back from his travels, bronzed, and that's not all he has in common with a turkey. It's the Field Sports Channel news stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The RSPB has brought out its annual bird crime report. The document, which provides the anti-gamekeeper organisation with a day of publicity on national media, claims 108 incidents of raptor persecution in the UK in 2021. This figure is based mainly on RSPB supporters finding dead birds. The RSPB admits that 75% of raptors die naturally in their first year. In cases on which they have commented, police confirm that only a few were poisoned and that these are likely to be from an accidental use of rat poison. The RSPB fails to point to the increasing breeding success of raptors on shoots, including the Hen Harrier Brood Management Scheme by gamekeepers. Media, including the BBC, failed to ask gamekeepers or shooting organisations for a comment. The Countryside Alliance accuses the RSPB of using its report as a political tool to attack rural communities unjustly. Gamekeepers no, lose is, their jobs when they That is kill information that is also get, gathered by the National Wildlife Crime Unit and the police. I'm this sorry. is a police matter, yeah. and the convictions for Hen Harrier persecution have gone off the, the bottom of the graph. Yeah, now. well, we all know why that is. It's very why, difficult. Why is that? It's, this crime happens in remote areas, and it's very difficult to get prosecutions. So how but did you people, get all those wonderful prosecutions 15 well, people, years ago? People, gamekeepers have been filmed over the years. A wildfire has swept across National Trust land in Snowdonia. Despite recent rain, the blaze was visible from northern Anglesey. As we record field sports news, firefighters are still on site. They plan to investigate the cause once the blaze is under control. It's a site of special scientific interest, managed by the local Grazers Association, which confirms that controlled burning to create fire breaks is not allowed. The National Trust opposes controlled burning. The organisation has a history of wildfires on its land, doing as yet unaccounted damage to the UK's peat bank. Local farmer Gareth Wynne Jones was among the first on site to witness the devastation. So while the earth burnt, big piece of the mountain, we're not sure how it started, but a big, big mount of that mountain went on fire. And to see that was pretty scary, pretty spectacular. Fortunate that no animals were lost, that it looks like there isn't any major, major damage. Land will always heal itself in time. The number of cases of bird flu in the UK is falling week by week. Dominic Bolton of Aim to Sustain says there's been a decrease of around a third in the number of incidents. It dropped from around 21 cases a week in October to around 13 cases a week in November. The avian influenza prevention zone, the AIPZ, remains in place for the UK. In England, there's an order to house all birds to protect them from coming into contact with wild birds that can spread the disease. It's the worst outbreak the country has seen, sparked by a highly contagious strain of the flu. 
There's a link to the government advice below. Biosecurity measures employed by shoots means there is no sign the shooting season will be restricted. We are now far enough into the shooting season that logically you would expect uh, that case numbers would be increasing as a result of all the shooting activity that's going on and that's not being borne out by what we're seeing. Antis are redoubling their efforts to encourage people to lobby their MPs to ban trophy imports. The campaign to ban trophy hunting has appealed to its supporters to share its message by changing their Twitter profile pictures. A private member's bill by Labour MP for Worley in the black country, John Speller, is making its way through Parliament but is unlikely to become law. He claims the Whip's offices are blocking it. Thanks to Steve Jones for the story. 90% approve of this bill. It's been put off, it's even been promised by the government and yet again the government Whip's office are blocking it. The Claygrounds neighbours are opposing its plans to expand. Brandon Wood Shooting Ground near Stubton in Lincolnshire wants to triple its events to 150 a year. The business assured local people that the increase would not have a detrimental impact on the area, but parish councils have objected to a new perimeter to contain and absorb noise from the shooting activity. The Brandon Wood Clay Shooting Residents Association, which monitors the shooting, describes plans as a massive intensification. Five parish councils in surrounding villages have lodged objections. Police have reportedly closed an investigation into an alleged arson attack on Chris Packham's home in Hampshire. The BBC presenter claims that he was targeted over his extreme views on fox hunting. Field sports supporters believe Packham is lying and that the vehicle was more likely torched as part of a normal Saturday night in the New Forest. Police have a clear CCTV image of a suspect, but no one has been arrested. The Countryman's Weekly reports that Hampshire police have decided to focus on other cases after investigating the incident for more than a year. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association is concerned about the government's plans to licence grouse moors. The recommendations have appeared in a bill which is now out to consultation. The SGA urges its members, shooters and businesses that rely on the grouse shooting season to respond to the consultation which closes on the 14th of December 2022. Link below. The association says it will work to ensure measures introduced are proportionate and do not discriminate against Scotland's professional gamekeepers. That given the implications and the gravity of potential gravity of those implications that this was not the approach which was going to work to tackle that specific problem and that really remains the position today. A pair of deer stalkers have had to deal with two bucks tangled in a hay net. Nigel Kay and Wayne Johnston came across two male fallow deer with their antlers entwined in netting and locked tightly. They discovered the distressed animals on an estate in the Cotswolds. Normally the animals wouldn't be shot out of season, but they were exhausted and in a poor state. And my first instinct was how can we rescue them and then I thought they're too big and too stressed to we go anywhere near. I collectively with Nigel decided we were going to dispatch them, which, which I did and my thoughts for health and safety of both ourselves, the husbandry of the animals to, to stop them suffering any more than what they had done. A wild boar has attacked a woman and her dog walking in Scotland. Arlene Sterling had her golden retriever on a lead near Loch Fyne when she saw a group of animals coming out of the woods. She knew there was a family of wild boar in the woods, but she hadn't expected to see them on the road. She started to film the piglets. When her dog barked, a larger boar attacked her. The animal repeatedly charged at her and tossed her up in the air. She suffered bruises and dislocated fingers. Arlene says she had been told they were tame, so wasn't frightened when she saw them. She's concerned the boar could breed and start to graze near houses and children. Police have issued a warning not to approach the animals or attempt to feed them, as they can be protective of their young. Thanks to Robin Baldwin for the story. And finally, His Majesty the King has been appointed a park ranger. King Charles has officially become park ranger of Windsor Great Park, 70 years after his father, Prince Philip, was appointed to the post. In his role as ranger of the Great Park, the King will offer oversight and guidance to the deputy ranger and his team in the day-to-day -day stewardship of one of the country's oldest estates. The role can be traced back to 1559, when Sir Henry Neville was appointed during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Prince Philip was the longest serving ranger, holding the role for 69 years and reintroducing Red Deer into the Deer Park in 1979. You're now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.
buying shooting kits, then head to Kit Finder, and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the UK. Kit Finder, the shooting kit comparison website. Next, there are Young Shots schemes all over the country. Some of them are run by the shooting organisations, others run by dedicated groups. James Marchington heads to North Wales to a driven shoot which is laying on a Young Shots day. It's the start of the pheasant season and we're near Denby in North Wales for a day specially laid on for a team of Young Shots aged between 10 and 16. Jim Lancaster, one of the regular guns here, has been planning the day for weeks. Basically, we've organised this Young Shots Day um, to try and keep the, the young generation interested in field sports. Um, so we managed to get um, five young girls under 16 and five young lads um, under 16 from all over the country. They've come from Scarborough, Dorset, right up north. So yeah, all to keep them interested in, you know, in field sports uh, and a bit of shooting. So yeah, so far it's going really well. They're all having a bit of shooting, hitting a few, missing a few. Um, they're all getting together and hopefully, like, you know, they'll get get together in the future and carry on doing it. Are we having fun? Several of the youngsters have bagged a bird or two, and for some, it's the first game they've ever shot. The first game, yeah. First game? Yeah. First game shot in the Chapsy Partridge. Brilliant. And you got one on your very first drive? Yep. That's quite an achievement. Are you pleased about that? Very. <laughs> Jim's daughter, Fern, is one of the guns today. She's already making a name for herself on the clay circuit. What does she enjoy shooting most, clays or game? I don't know. Um, I love it all, to be honest. It's like snap shooting, you don't know where it's coming from. Whether there's a clay, you know where it is coming from because you see a pair. At school, I won't be able to speak about it a lot because some people might not like, oh, you kill things, so I just don't talk about it a lot. But if they're comfortable with me talking about it, I will talk about it, but yeah. I respect everyone's decisions, so... I first started shooting when she was 11, um, and then she had a lesson then with um, Scott Barnett at Mickley Hall. And um, she's, yeah, quite shy to that recently. And, um, yeah, she's been shooting clays now for about two and a half years. Um, she currently won the British Ladies' Colt Championship down at Barbie this year. So, yeah, we had a fantastic year. That was, like, uh, you know, the end of the year, really. So, uh, yeah, she's doing really well. So, yeah, I get so much enjoyment out of watching her shoot. You know, like on the last drive, she shot an absolute fantastic partridge. Made my day, made her day. You know, you can go home happy now. You know, it's not all about bag, bag, bag. It's all about that sporting shot. And she actually left quite a few. And she was like, no, it's too low, too low. Conscious that people behind her as well. If she shot one, leave one to go through. So, it's how you should bring them up. You might think this is a bunch of posh, privileged kids being spoiled by their rich parents, but Jim says that's far from the truth. No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, technically I'm a rat catcher, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a millionaire. Um, I work hard, I, you know, I enjoy spending my money. I'm lucky only to have one child, so I put my money into it. Any competitive sport, you know, like, like I said, hockey, football, they're all travelling the country, they're all doing, you know, all the equipment they need, probably spending the same amount of money but doing what they enjoy doing. Ten-year-old Macy Lee has been beating with her spaniel before. This is her first time on the peg. I've done clays before today. This is my first time on game and I've shot two partridge. Fantastic. <laughs> that must be exciting. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. They're not, uh, they're not quite the same as clays, are they? No, they're much faster and with the wind. They're going way too fast. Her name's Bella. She's seven years old. She's had a litter of puppies. She's an, an amazing dog. Yeah, she's my dog and my sister's dog. We work her quite often. And uh, my sister goes picking up with her or I go beating with her. I love Bella. Jamie Ellis, who runs the shoot, says the birds would be a challenge even for an experienced team of guns. Yeah, well, the wind helped on that on that last drive for sure. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a, it was a good drive. Yeah, it was. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, yeah, the mountain drive is probably a bit of the party piece really. Um, every every team comes and shot it. They want to come back uh, again and shoot it. You know, that's the one that they all talk about. Well, we moved up uh, be yeah just before COVID. Uh, and we, yeah, we moved up from from Street, Shropshire. So yeah, it'd be 
three years. Three years we've we've had the shoot going. Yeah. Not the easiest three years either. No, we started in COVID. Yeah, so that was a yeah that was a bit of a, a downer, but but no, yeah. So it's it's quite uh, yeah it's exciting, isn't it? Nice to have a team of young guns, and yeah, it's good. Lane and Bray have shot game together before, so how have they got on? Uh, I was down the bottom. There's some decent pheasants, more partridges really. Got some crackers and. Oh, that's it mostly. Did you hit any? Uh, four. What about you? Uh, I was just out of it on that drive. I, well, I was number 10, you were in that middle, weren't you? So. Yeah. Yeah? And then how'd you get on the next drive? They were fast, weren't they? Yeah, they, I, I did all right there. Good ones. Oh, yeah. They were, with the wind set, they were moving. They, you weren't messing about, they were gone. <laughs> they were going fast, weren't they? Uh, what guns are you shooting over there? Uh, 12 ball. I'm shooting a 12 ball Browning 525. Uh, I like uh, all the people and just keep the company. In. Yeah. I like winning as well. You shoot plays too? Yeah. Both do. Yeah. yeah. So who, who does the most winning then? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of rivalry between you, is it? No, Definitely. We're, we're mates. <laughs> but, yeah. Next, Jamie and the team have laid on a duck drive. Ten-year-old Mikey is thrilled to shoot his first ever duck. You got that yourself? Yeah. Is it a difficult shot? Yeah. It was. You got it anyway. Hmm. What gun are you shooting? Uh, I'm shooting Swansea ball. Although, I got it on Friday and today that was the first time it's ever been shot and it's performed quite well. Yeah, for him to shoot a duck, he's, uh, he's over the moon now. It's going to make the journey home a lot, uh, lot easier for us, let's put it that way. So. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. How does it make you feel as a dad? Uh, I enjoy it. It's, it's enjoyable for, for spending time with my lad at the weekends. He comes and does a huge amount of stalking with me. Um, he's got his own catapult, he's got his own 2 2 bin file that he shoots rabbits with. Um, and then a day like this is just, uh, just fantastic for young shots to get involved with, isn't it? So, you know, we can't afford to do these, uh, these days that are thousands of pounds, and for someone to be able to come along and bring their lad along and experience what other people pay big money for. All the kids here today are enjoying it. I wouldn't say anyone's from privileged backgrounds and I think it's nice that the, the doors have been open for them today. It's not just something for the elite, it's something that's been, been enjoyed by the countryman for, for centuries, so why not continue that? Ella has enjoyed her day. Hey. Have you had a good day? Yes, thank you. You've really good it. day. Yeah, brilliant. And you've hit a few? Yeah, I got two ducks and two partridge. Look them. Is that the first game you've ever shot? Uh, no, second day. Yeah? But I'm normally a beater. Right. So it's nice to be a gun. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've enjoyed the day, it's been good. Excellent. Yes, thank you, it was really good. You can find Ellis Sporting on Facebook. <laughs> Thanks to all who took part in that. Now let's head back to Africa, where one hunter is trying to encourage other women to get with the programme. Is hunting a man's world? Emma Sander says no. The 19-year-old, who lives in the northern Cape province of South Africa, has been hunting since she was a child. We went to this farm called Batsumi and we stayed in a tented camp. My father and I and one of his friends and two of his friend's sons, Arthur and Jack funnily enough. And um, we go out in the morning and there's tons of impala, but we can never get close enough. The farm was a bit large for the amount of wildlife, I think. And as we're driving back from um, the hunt, we see a blessed buck standing about 120 meters away, facing us. And I tap on the, on the car's roof and I tell him, let me get out, let me get down, I'm gonna shoot this thing. So I get down with my dad's 306 and um, the PH puts me on the sticks and I shoot and it drops. And we get there, we take out the stomach, smear my face full of blood, take some wonderful photos with the fading light and that was my first hunting experience. 
Throughout Emma's life, hunting has been a constant passion, especially with her father. My dad and I, we have always gone hunting at a certain point in the year. And it's very comforting. It's packing the vehicle, making sure everything's there, and then waking up at the crack of dawn, making a fire, cooking water for coffee, heading out, coming back for lunch, and then heading out again. It's very systematic. Emma believes that hunting needs an influx of women, and that would boost businesses. She thinks the industry has to share the reality and beauty of hunting to attract them. I think the main thing that puts women off hunting is the idea that it's blood, guts, not showering for five days, completely tired and covered in smoke and ash, but that's not, that's not the reality. It can be the reality, but it generally isn't. So we have to create a better picture of hunting to make people see that it's actually something beautiful, it's something to be appreciated and valued and if you don't like to shoot animals, that's okay, but, then, but that you can still come along and enjoy the experience. Emma's advice for women who want to try hunting is believe in yourself and know you can do anything you put your mind to. As girls when we're growing up, we're taught some limitations. You aren't as strong, you aren't as fast, and yes, physically, I'm not as strong as most men, and I'm not as fast either, but if a woman wants to become a PH, there's absolutely nothing that's going to stop her. She just has to work a little bit harder to get there. Some of the stuff that we do, like with the mechanical things, it's going to take a little bit more effort, and you're going to work a bit harder, but as Confucius says, it doesn't matter how slow you go as long as you do not stop. Emma honed her skills at the Northern Cape Professional Hunting School. For more on their courses, working with African wildlife, visit ncph.co.za. Thanks to Kayla van Furen from the Northern Cape Professional Hunting School for filming that interview. Whether you are a woman or a man, if you want to go to one of the school's courses and spend some time with African wildlife, there's a link below. Next, we have a guest host for Hunting YouTube this week. It's Neil Ragg from YouTube's Rack and Load. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. I do like it when a YouTuber tells it how it is, which is why I love this raw video by Nut and Fancy, who is brutally honest about a shotgun that just fails. This video is a hilarious Mickey take at me because I'm left-handed. It's from Range23, a great and up-and-coming YouTube channel. This is a great rat shooting video from Forget Being Infested. It's an entertaining channel that asks its viewers to dedicate a rat to something they dislike, like drivers who tailgate, for example. Here's a bare bones look at tripods and bipods from champion HFT shooter Roger Late. It's from Triple G, a great channel that deserves more subscribers. Next up, some awesome pigeon shooting action from Swedish channel Air Rifle Activities with great slow motion shots and a good story of why he has to do it. This is a new one from Air Hunter Gerard. He has a channel called Shooter Make Ready. It is a fairly techie channel, mainly dedicated to FX air guns. His hunting channel from South Africa is great too. Here's Joe from Cyclops Videos, which concentrates on good, honest scope reviews. In this one, he's testing the hell out of a Vortex Strike Eagle. Finally, here's a video from yours truly. I thought this one was cool because I ran a competition for a day long range shooting with Sharp Shooting UK. It felt good to give a little something back to the sport, especially to a shooter that had never tried serious long range shooting before. Thank you, Neil, and there's a link to his channel in the description below. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please visit our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. 
You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address to our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. Goodbye.